So in this video, I am going to discuss erythropoiesis and erythropoiesis is discussed under these three subheadings or these are the learning objectives for this session. Let's try and understand the definition, the sites and the stages of erythropoiesis. Okay. So first let's begin with the definition and what definition I am providing you here is the complete definition of erythropoiesis. It is defined as the process of differentiation, development and formation of mature red blood cells from immature hematopoietic stem cells and their release into the circulation. So this gives us a complete meaning of what erythropoiesis is. Okay. Second is the sites of erythropoiesis. The sites of erythropoiesis are divided into two sites like basically two periods. One is during the embryonic life and another one is after birth. And again during the embryonic life it is divided into three parts. Uh, like it is divided into three trimesters. The first three months, the next three months and the last three months. So during the first three months of the embryonic life. The erythropoiesis basically takes place in the mesoderm of the yolk sac. That's why this stage where erythropoiesis is taking place is also called as the mesoblastic stage. Remember, these are not stages, these are the sites. And this is the only site of erythropoiesis wherein it is taking place intravascular. That means inside the blood vessel. From the fourth to six months, erythropoiesis majoritarily is going to occur in the liver with little contribution from the spleen. That's why this is also called as the hepatic stage. And in the last three months, that is 7, 8th and ninth month, the erythropoiesis shifts exclusively into the bone marrow and this is called as the medullary stage. Now, let's see what's going to happen after the birth of the baby. After the birth, till the age of 18 to 20 years, erythropoiesis is going to occur in bone marrow of all the bones. But after 18 to 20 years, erythropoiesis shifts only to the marrow of the membranous bones. So what are these membranous bones? So examples of membranous bones are our vertebrae, the sternum, the ribs, the pelvis and the skull. Not only there, erythropoiesis also occurs in the ends of the long bones like the femur, humerus and the tibia. Okay. So these are the sites of erythropoiesis in the adult. As here we can see erythropoiesis is occurring in the skull. It occurs in the ribs. It occurs in the vertebra, it occurs in the ends of the long bones, it occurs in the hips and again here ends of the long bones. So this is the sites of erythropoiesis. Okay. Next, in order to understand the stages, we have to also know regarding the stem cell. The stem cell as we all know is the mother cell and uh, the stem cell is called as, the, because this stem cell is giving rise to the, all the blood cells, that's why it is called as hematopoietic stem cell or it is more aptly called as pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. Why? What is the meaning of pluripotent? Pluripotent means because the stem cell is able or it is capable of giving rise to so many different types of cells. That's why it is called as pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. Now this stem cell has got two important properties. One is what is called as self renewal and the second one is called as differentiation. So what is self renewal? When a stem cell renews itself into one more stem cell or it forms one more stem cell that is called as self renewal. But when a stem cell becomes some other cell that process is called as differentiation. Of course the stem cell is going to become some other cell. But why a stem cell has to renew itself and get converted into a stem cell? Because the number of stem cells in the bone marrow is limited. And now imagine if all the stem cells get converted into some other cell that is they undergo the process of differentiation then no stem cell will be left in the bone marrow for further conversion. So this process of self renewal is occurring so as to maintain the stock of the stem cell in the bone marrow. So remember stem cell is having two important properties one is called as self renewal another one is called as differentiation. Okay now let's start with the stages and whenever we are describing the stages always we are supposed to write pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell as the first stage because this is a mother cell. Now this pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell is going to renew itself into one more pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. This I have already explained and further the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell is going to get differentiated into two more varieties of stem cells. Okay, One is called as 
a lymphoid stem cell okay and this lymphoid stem cell is going to get differentiated further into lymphocytes and we have two types of lymphocytes the t lymphocyte and the b lymphocyte okay one more stem cell is what is called as myeloid stem okay and this myeloid stem cell is next going to get differentiated into groups of cells okay now these groups of cells are also called as the colonies of cells and these colonies of cells more or less they are going to give rise to only one type of cell so let's say there is a colony or a group of cell which are going to give rise only to the rbcs those are called as colony forming unit e so that means e here stands for erythrocytes similarly there is a group or a colony of cells which is going to give rise to granulocytes and monocytes now that colony is called as colony forming unit g and m and then there is a third colony which is called as colony forming unit m wherein m here stands for megakaryocytes and this is the one which is giving rise to platelets that means myeloid stem cell has the ability to give rise to erythrocytes it has the ability to differentiate itself into granulocytes and the monocytes and also the okay. now this colony forming unit e is next going to give rise to a series of cells which are called as the precursor cells okay which are called as the precursor cells and these precursor cells are ultimately going to differentiate into a mature red blood cells okay few books also refer these colony forming units as progenitor cells they are also called as the progenitor cells so when we are writing regarding the precursor cell we have to write five points in each of these precursor cells never forget this point so what are these five points these are we should write regarding the size of the cell we should write regarding the characteristic features of the cytoplasm we should write regarding the changes which are occurring in the nucleus we should write regarding the hemoglobin which is the stage where hemoglobin has appeared which is the stage where hemoglobin concentration has increased and we should also write regarding the mitosis so remember we are supposed to touch all the five points in each of the stages of this precursor stage of the erythropoiesis okay now let's start with the first stage this is called as the pronormoblast okay this is the earliest recognizable precursor and each of this pronormoblast has the capacity to give rise to 8 to 32 rbcs now just by looking at the diagram here we can say that nucleus is fairly big and it is occupying majority of the cell and then we are having a bluish looking cytoplasm and the cytoplasm is very very less there is a thin rim of cytoplasm surrounding the nucleus and the nucleus is also having nucleolus it is having nucleolus these are the things i can see in the diagram so what are the five points that we are supposed to touch the size of the cell so what is the size of the cell here the size ranges from 12 to 20 micrometers in diameter Second thing is the nucleus. Nucleus is large and it is bluish or purplish in color. Third thing is cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is basophilic, bluish and it is canty. Fourth thing is mitosis. This cell is actively mitotic. That's why I said that each cell has the capacity to produce 8 to 32 RBCs. And do we have hemoglobin here? No, hemoglobin is totally absent. So have we touched the five points? Yes, we, we have understood the size, the nucleus, cytoplasm, the characteristics of cytoplasm, mitosis and hemoglobin. And one more thing which we can say, we can see here is it is also having one or more nucleoli. So now this pronormoblast is going to differentiate into the next stage which is called as an early normoblast or also called as the basophilic normoblast. Okay, again the same points, the size. The size here is 10 to 16 micrometers that means the size has reduced 
second thing we are supposed to hit is cytoplasm so how is the cytoplasm again as here we can see the cytoplasm is still deeply basophilic and it is scanty how is the nucleus nucleus is large but here we can see that there is no nucleoli the nucleoli has disappeared and what has happened to the chromatin the chromatin has become more coarser hemoglobin remember even though the cytoplasm is appearing bluish but very little hemoglobin appears in this stage okay so remember this is the first stage when hemoglobin appears but hemoglobin is not good enough in amount so that it can change the color of the cytoplasm that's why cytoplasm is going to still look basophilic and what about the mitosis yes this cell is also mitotic but not as much as the pronormoblast okay but not as much as the pronormoblast so we have touched all the points here we have described the size we have described the cytoplasm we have described the nucleus we have told regarding the hemoglobin as well as mitosis okay because the cytoplasm is basophilic that's why it is also called as a basophilic normoblast now the early normoblast is going to differentiate into what is called as an intermediate normoblast or this is also called as polychromatic normoblast okay it's also called as the polychromatic normoblast now looking into the diagram here we can see one striking change and that is with regards to the cytoplasm now how does the cytoplasm appears here the cytoplasm is grayish the cytoplasm is grayish let's try and understand as to why the cytoplasm is grayish here okay coming to the first point the size 10 to 12 micrometer so what we are seeing here is that as in when the stages are differentiating and we are coming nearer to the mature cell the size of the cell is going to decrease second let's see regarding the nucleus nucleus has become much more smaller condensed and coarser third thing is regarding the hemoglobin here sufficient hemoglobin has appeared now because sufficient hemoglobin has appear appeared the cytoplasm is that's why looking grayish the reason is because the cytoplasm here is containing a mixture of basophilic rna and acidophilic hemoglobin that's why the cytoplasm is that's why cytoplasm is appearing grayish and that's why this cell is also called as polychromatic that is we are having more than two colors which are mixing up and they are giving rise to a grayish color looking cytoplasm okay next point is mitosis remember the mitosis has become very sluggish and this is the last stage which is capable of mitosis so size is done nucleus is done hemoglobin is done cytoplasm is done and mitosis is done now this intermediate or the polychromatic normoblast is going to differentiate into the stage which is called as a late normoblast or it is also called as the orthochromatic erythroblast or normoblast so by looking at the diagram here this is that stage here we can see that the cytoplasm has become completely acidophilic or pinkish that means very good amount of hemoglobin is synthesized second thing is with regards to the nucleus here we can see the nucleus has become much more smaller in size it is much more condensed and almost the nucleus is at the stage of being thrown out of the cell or i can also say that the nucleus is not centrally placed this is how the position of the nucleus should have been what has happened is it has been pushed to the periphery okay so let's see the features the size has reduced further it has become 8 to 10 micrometers in diameter the cytoplasm has become fairly eosinophilic with only a tinge of blue that means there is an increase in the production of the hemoglobin with regards to the nucleus writing these three points is extremely important the first point is that the nucleus has become pycnotic here so what is the meaning of the word pycnotic is that the nucleus has become thickened and shrunken second thing is that the nucleus undergoes fragmentation or it undergoes disintegration the third thing is that the nucleus is not centrally positioned usually it is pushed to the periphery and the word we use for that is eccentrically placed or in few stages it will be also partially extruded out of the cell next point is mitosis as i had already told you the last stage the prior to this stage the intermediate normoblast was the last stage capable of mitosis hence mitosis is totally absent so we have touched the all the four points size of the cell the cytoplasm of the cell 
and increased hemoglobin production three important points regarding the nucleus and then the mitosis now coming to the next stage which is called as reticulocyte so here we can see the striking difference is that there is no nucleus the cytoplasm is completely acidophilic that means complete hemoglobin has appeared but we can see one very important thing here is that these blue color filamentous things which we can see here okay these blue color filamentous things even here we can see in the supravital staining these are nothing but these are the one which are called as the reticulum okay so let's understand what is this this is an immediate precursor of the rbc's this is also called as a juvenile rbc okay the size coming to the size it is just slightly larger than the mature rbc measuring around 7.5 micrometers the cytoplasm is going to contain very small amount of rna and this rna is appearing in the form of a reticulum that is net like that's why this cell is called as a reticulocyte and what is this reticulum this reticulum is a remnant of disintegrated organelles the organelles are all disintegrated like the mature rbc is not going to contain any organelles it, it doesn't have nucleus it doesn't have mitochondria it doesn't have golgi apparatus so all these organelles are disintegrated so this reticulum which we are seeing in this stage is remnant of that disintegrated organelles okay and the nucleus is of course absent mitosis is absent hemoglobin has appeared in a very good amount like a mature rbc now let's see what is going to happen to this reticulocyte okay this reticulocyte is going to stay in the bone marrow for a period of 1 to 2 days and it passes from the bone marrow into the blood capillaries and in the blood capillaries it is going to circulate for 1 to 2 days before it matures into a biconcave rbc so normally speaking reticulocytes can be found in the peripheral circulation about 0.5 to 1% or 0.5 to 2% of reticulocytes are absolutely normal in the peripheral circulation and it is going to take a, a period of 7 days for the maturation and the formation of the rbcs that is for the erythropoiesis to take place completely remember out of the 7 days it takes 5 days till the stage of the reticulocyte and 2 days for maturation of the reticulocyte into a mature rbc so if you have understood this thing kindly hit the subscribe button and like this video and share this video as much as possible thank you